You can find, if you walk down Glastonbury High Street, you'll, you are stop and ask anybody. I mean, you throw a stone and you'll find a healer. <laughs> and if you say to them, oh, you know, you're interested in alchemy, they'll say, oh, yes, I am an alchemist. You're like, what does that mean? You know, and, and if you dig a little bit, you'll find that they, they really have no idea what alchemy really is. Like, they haven't done any of the, the, the traditional study or initiations into the Western mysteries that, that alchemy is actually, actually does. You know, there's, a again, a lineage, a very long lineage of... Um, you know, teaching these things from student to pupil, and I think that word alchemy has entered into the public lexicon. It's sort of it's taken to mean, you know, somebody is a kind of um, like a maestro. You know, like Heston Blumenthal. Oh, he's an alchemist in the kitchen. But um, I would say that on one end of the spectrum, you've got you've got people who are doing spiritual alchemy and calling themselves alchemists, you know, and that's fine. I, I don't begrudge that. I think, you know, if that's the way you want to work, then, you know, and that works for you, that's great. But, but I would equally say, you know, if you've never done any of the lab work, you're missing out on a very rich tradition, you know. Um, it, again, it's a long lineage of initiation. And, and, and it, for the West, in the West at least, this is a very powerful um, form of initiation because it's people have been doing it for so long and it's so well mapped out that um, it's just it's just a great path to take it's a great way of learning um, and so I'd almost say if you haven't you know even made a tincture or something um, these practices help to ground your understanding and root it in the world you know and, and if you're in your mind a lot which most people in the modern world that's the main problem people have they can't get out of their heads mm. um, it's a great practice for that so, to me, an alchemist is someone, someone who can, um, worth, who is worth their salt as an alchemist can, can do the spiritual stuff, but they can do the physical lab alchemy as well. Um, but to, saying that, on the other end of the spectrum, you've often got people who call themselves alchemists who work solely in the lab, you know, and you can find lots of these people on Facebook, you know, they, they spend all their time in private making pretty things, you know, Doing, doing almost just the physical processes, but you know, um, in in the world, so to speak, out in the world with everyone else, they're just very Saturnian people. They're very undistilled. They're, um, you know, they don't get along well with other people. They, um, you know, I've I've met people like this who run schools of alchemy. You know, and it's it's kind of sad in a way because, um, you know, they keep a very tight grip on their students and they. They, they have very um, myopic views about what alchemy is and that, you know, their way is the only way and no one else could possibly be doing it. And you've sort of got to almost take a step back at points and go, well, you know, you've got to have both, don't you? You have to have some degree of being able to do the practices but actually see that what it's teaching you is, is the microcosm. It's like you're seeing how these things manifest in the world and really if you're learning properly you should be able to take those principles and apply them to anything in your life you know the athenor doesn't and the vessel doesn't have to be in the lab or inside you it can be a relationship it can be a company it can be an you know an organization it can be a country it could be the world it could be a solar system it's it's the same principles across the board so to me someone who's really worth their salt and calls themselves an alchemist they can do both and, and they can apply it in their own lives to, to make their lives more whole, more complete, more, more loving.